Should GPs be balloted over proposed changes to the contract? Being fair, it's a little early to say about whether we should ballot GPs at this point. What we do need to know is uh, something more in the way of detail about what is being proposed by uh, the other, uh, by our partners, uh, negotiating partners, for imposition. I don't like to talk about that word, but that nevertheless is what we're being threatened with. So at the moment, we've already written to the uh, written to uh, GPs with uh, as many details as we have at the moment about what's being talked about, about what our principles are. Uh, we hope to get more information and try to consider and calculate the effect that this is going to have, both on general practice and on general practitioners. We'll pull all that together at the next GPC meeting and take a decision there about what to do. But I wouldn't want to imply that um, at any point there's some deadline by which we have to decide on a ballot for industrial action. It's always one of the options that's open to a profession uh, whose negotiations are being treated in such a, well, I think it's fair to call it, a cavalier manner. We're trying to engage and negotiate and it's difficult to get the other side to keep engaged with us. And do you think that the negotiators should return to the negotiating table? I think that the negotiators are not the people who've walked away from the negotiating table. We've been uh, consistently demonstrating our willingness and our ability to engage with uh, the uh, negotiators for the, for the other side, for employers, about what the shape of the contract should be for next year. Uh, we found that during that time we've had, a cave, we've had a number of periods where that has been returned to us, where negotiations have taken place in reasonable faith, but at the moment the government has decided that uh, decided to pull back and has decided to consider imposing the contract rather than negotiating it. So I think in a very real sense it's not actually us who's withdrawn from the table at all. But one thing we're not going to do is to go back and say, well look, you threatened to impose, therefore we'll downgrade every principle we had in order to try to accommodate. There does come a point when it becomes impossible to lose so many of your principles to agree with a government that appears to be so strongly set on a damaging course. And do you have faith in the GPC negotiators? I do, absolutely. The GPC negotiators are people that I've known individually and collectively for quite a long time, and they're people who have um, shepherded and husbanded a number of the changes, recent changes in British general practice for the benefit of general practitioners, and I would like to see them continuing to do so. And what effect do you think it will have on the BMA, the fact that the Scottish Government have opened talks with the Scottish GPC on possible independent... GP contract in Scotland? We have a, um, we do have a number of um, uh, um, recent events in the BMA that obviously across different branches of practice have seen different uh, contracts grow up. So from my own personal experience, for example, about 10 years ago when we brought the new consultant contract in, it actually came in as a slightly different contract in the four countries because of the way the negotiations went at the time. Now, that's not necessarily something that we're opposed to. At the moment, we do believe that a single unified UK contract for GPs would undoubtedly be the best outcome. Um, but we cannot refuse to uh, acknowledge the fact that there are different governments in the different countries and that they are uh, responsible, and if they're responsible for health in the way the Scottish Government is, that they may, may wish to open these discussions with us. And we'd seek to maintain all the principles that we have, uh, the, all the principles that we've had governing our approach to negotiations and, if necessary, engage with the Scottish Government on that. Your actual question was what effect would this have on the BMA? Mm. Um, it would engage, uh, it would cause us to make sure that we're able to deal with this in a way that takes care of the interests of Scottish and everybody else's general practitioners and general practice, uh, in, a, in, in perhaps in a slightly different way. But the BMA has demonstrated over the last few years that it is able to take part in talks with devolved negotiations on various things, up to and including separate contracts. And it's never something that we would rule out. It's something we've grown used to working with in the BMA.